So at this point, all of the bases are screwed down, and now we're putting on the square tapered column halves. And they just slide uh, in on the side, you know, because you're not going to lift up and over. They're designed to slide in because you, you, don't, you can't lift up beyond the beam. So you're just sliding them in on a parallel to the, to the tops of the uh, river rock there. Once the two halves are together, uh, what the guys will generally do is uh, take a screw on each half on the bottom and lock those two together to where they're aligned. Then they'll start by taking one side all the way up and lining it up as they screw it together. There's ten screws on each half and uh, they're already countersunk for you. We have the countersink holes already in the, in the, in the mold. What you would want to do is to take a pilot hole through the uh, uh, countersink just to make sure you can go through before you put them up. And then, uh, then you can screw them together. Again, just making sure your, your surfaces are lining up. That's all you've got to do. And at this point, that's all they're going to do. They're going to go through all of the columns, stacking them on top and screwing them together to where they're lined up. And then after that, then they'll secure the column, I'm sorry, the, yeah, the square tapered column up to the beam. Then they'll secure it to the river rock uh, column. And you'll see that as we go forth. But again, just like right now, you can see the misalignment on that one. They're just going to line these up starting at the bottom and then screwing all the way up to the top. In some cases, you can use a bar clamp if you have a kind of an ornery uh, uh, one that's not holding together for you or if you're doing it by yourself. That's how I did it was uh, a bar clamp. Worked really nice. But again, notice they're starting with the bottom and then on each side and then just screwing up. On some of this footage, I sped up the drilling process because it, it just was slow. Not that it's slow in real time, but it's just more footage than you need to see at the slow real time. So. Again, these are inch and five eighths uh, deck screws. What we're using is the Phillips plus head because it's a bigger number two head, Phillips head, and it's got the square drive in the middle. So it really does hold a good bite there. Again, the countersinks are provided so that when you seat the screw, it's just below the surface so that when we do caulk it, it will not be uh, protruding through that caulk or be a speed bump as I like to call them. Again, notice they're coming in from the side sliding in. What we did on the top of these was, I believe that the, uh, the column top the capital is, uh, what is it, uh, 13 and a half inches, so uh, maybe it was, uh, I just remember 6 and 5 eighths was the middle of it. Uh, so find the middle, mark it on the column, and then you obviously know a 3 and a half inch beam, half of that, make a mark on that, and those two should line up. The key in anything is to, to center it. The post, uh, the River Rock uh, uh, pillars are centered around the post. These should then also be centered. You'll find though that there's a lean one way or the other. That's why we drive it up through the capital into the beam first. It elevates that. You'll see that that whole square tapered column lift up off that river rock just a tiny bit. Right now it's sitting on it. It's not so much that we don't want it sitting on it, but it's just you'll when you suck it up a little, you'll find it's uh, it's then uh, going to be perfectly centered. Right now it could be leaning an inch or two one way or the other if it's just sitting on the river rock. Countersinking again. Now these holes are not provided in the factory so you're going to countersink this. Notice the mark on the beam, notice the mark on the capital. Uh, we are then screwing this up and you'll see what I'm talking about. He's actually going to suck this up and it'll lift up off that column a little bit. See that? Uh, again, now we can countersink these holes. These are not provided either. Um, they are just needing to be two screws, one on each side, and that's all we need to secure that to the uh, river rock column. Pre-drilling through both the column and the flange underneath is important. And then taking, a, I believe they're going to use a three-inch screw here. It doesn't need to be that long, but I think that's just what they had. Again, don't draw this one up too much. You'll pull the whole column, square taper column to one side. You want an even draw centering it on top of that river rock column. At this point, I think this is the last one that they're going to do, and then they're going to start caulking. 
the capital, oh, I'm sorry, the, the square tapered column, we're just using a white latex acrylic, whatever you can get, caulking, and then smoothing it out. As far as the column, uh, River Rock column underneath, when we use the caulking for temporal installations, it is going to be a gray caulking. It's a mortar caulk, basically. Again, an acrylic acrylic latex will work fine. Uh, after that point, it's it's uh, then going to be dealt with with some of our hydro seal. It's a cementitious paint that you'll put right on top of the gray caulking, wet on wet. So again, once the all the fasteners are employed, you're then tasked with covering them up so you don't see them. Uh, the only fasteners that you got to worry about on the river rock column are A, in the grout joint, which is Skyer's caulking right now. You've got your screw holes there and you're trying to caulk that joint to where you, you don't have that depth of that crack. Um, again, this is a gray caulking, but it's a lot lighter than our hydro seal, which is used to grout, in essence, after we've stained it here at the factory. Notice he covered up the screw head there. Uh, there's two other screws on each half that I want to bring your attention to. Is remember those ones at the bottom. Those are countersunk, so now we need to caulk over those as well. So those are the only screws that you should have on the river rock column, is the, th the three on the sides and the two on each side on the bottom. And then, of course, this joint needs to be caulked. Once this caulk has been applied, and then you'll see him smooth it out with his finger, which is the best tool we found, again, keeping a clean rag and a bucket of water so you can keep your finger clean helps out a lot. And notice that there is a little bit getting on the sides of the rock. When he gets all done you know, smoothing it out with his finger, he'll come back with a rag that he's washed in a bucket and make sure that there's no caulking on the side of those rocks. Um, again, in this particular instance, being as the model home, this is a this is bound to be uninstalled. So when it is, this will be something you can cut with a razor knife and take the two halves apart, take the screws out. If it were a permanent installation, I would be more apt to use a grout. Uh, it's a, a texture mix that we have. We sell by the bucket, and uh, then after that, the texture, when dried, would not look like the grout that we've used, which is the hydro seal. Uh, after we're done staining it, we get stain in the grout lines. So we have to come back and paint brush in a hydro seal, which is to make it look like a grout colored cement. Uh, to texture mix will not look the same as the grout that we have there now. So that's why you would use a, a texture mix. And then after that texture mix had set up a bit, then you could hydro seal uh, like we're going to hydro seal over this gray caulking. This gray caulking would not, it would stand out. We don't want it to stand out. We don't want anyone to know that this is two halves. It looks, should look like a masonry contractor came out, laid these stones one at a time, and it's not a system. It's not fake. It's real. That's what we're shooting for. So uh, again, in this particular case, this is just the means to fill the holes of the screw holes and the gap between the two columns. Um, after this is set up, just I, I don't even want it to set up. This particular day was a hot day. So we were able to, right, right after it tacked up in minutes, it was 90 degrees out. We were in full sun. Uh, we then, you'll see him as soon as uh, he's done doing this, Sheck comes behind him and is doing the hydro seal right on top of that with a little paintbrush. Again, the hydro seal is a cementitious paint that is waterborne. It, uh, it's just an add water mix. You've already got the polymer in it. So it's going to be an acrylic uh, similar to the acrylic that we're using as the caulk. So the two are going to bond. And in fact, you'll see in moments after he's done hydro sealing uh, how good it looks. Now this is the cementitious hydro seal. Notice the little paintbrush. I think we get these little paintbrushes at the art section in Walmart. They're very inexpensive, but they're the perfect style brush to paint that grout joint with. Now again, this particular grout joint right now is a dark green as the cementitious paint would be darker uh, uncured. Uh, notice the color on the on the uh, on, on his hand there. It's dried right there. See how it's lightened up. It's not dark green anymore. It's typical of cement mixes to be that way. Again, that's a dark green. It doesn't look anything like the grout that we have on the other areas of the river rock column. But as soon as he's done painting this, I pan over to the other side and you'll see it drying. I mean, it's drying in minutes in this particular application. On a colder day, it might take an hour or two. But nevertheless, wet on wet is the best, and it's covering over that lighter gray caulk. 
and again covering up screw holes what you're trying to do is to cover up any of the caulking the caulking should have covered up any of the screw holes and the joint itself then you're tasked with the hydro seal to cover up that gray caulking look because it's not a lighter color now here notice that this is still wet right in the middle or drying and uh, that seams disappeared now the caulks have been applied now the hydro seals over it and look at it drying it looks exactly the same as the surrounding grout areas once that grout uh, once the hydro seal is dried which could take a few minutes to a, uh, a couple of hours once it's dried you'll see us then sealing that area with the thermoplastic sealer which is what we've sealed all the other joints in the river rock with so there's a perfect seal to this whole thing okay. this is an HPV gun it's got the thermoplastic sealer that's already cut in your kit you just apply it just fog on a, a, a small coat to begin with and then hit it again you'll see it's just a little wet there he's not blowing on tons of this material it doesn't take a ton but two two passes is generally what we do and you're trying to overlap onto your non-treated areas so that you make sure you have a full seal now he's screwing he's, he just did the two screw holes there if you back up the DVD you can see that all the little holes that we had at the bottom the four of them we've we've also caulked and hydro sealed those and they need to be sealed as well now we're putting the caulking, which is just a white. It doesn't have to be gray because this is going to be primered and then stained or painted, I should say, like the rest of the house. So we're just running that caulk uh, down the, uh, the seam area. As well as he's doing the seam area, he's going to treat on this particular side the, the 10 counter sinks uh, where the screw holes are. Notice on the left area of this seam is what he's working right now. He's dealing with the seam where the two panels come together, and he's dealing with the... Uh, at any rate um, the left side you got the countersinks and the seam the right side of this area is just countersink but then you have the other side so you got four little areas to treat here and it doesn't take but minutes to do it this isn't sped up and you can run the clock on it I don't even think it takes them a minute and a half to do this whole side again this particular putty knife if you will it's not a putty knife it's available at the auto supply stores. It's, it's made for Bondo use. And it's much more flexible than anything else that you'll find at Lowe's, Home Depot, or such. It's made for fiberglass, and it works really, really well. Smooths it out. And the idea, again, this should be smoothed out to where you're not seeing it after you've primered and painted it. If you have any chips or dents from installation, if you've hit this or the column has any de uh, defect at all, uh, the caulking is the answer. Uh, you just basically put it on there and, tr and smooth it out with the, with the, with the uh, putty thing. There. Works like a charm. Again, keeping a bucket of water, cleaning your tool, whether you're using your finger uh, on the river rock or a rag on the river rock, uh, you're keeping your tools clean. This allows you to perform a much better smoothing out process. Again, now he's treating the trim, if you will, from the column and then going to smooth it out. I believe that's going to be the end of it. Uh, here he'll be smoothing this out and then you'll see him do a little bit more caulking on another column and then we show you the uh, final photo or video if I will uh, of the finished installation the only thing that you're not going to see done on this particular video is the primering and the painting of those square taper columns obviously you'd want to have that caulking dry and uh, fully dry that is and then you'd be painting over it primer painting and that's something that the model home center is, is charged to do and uh, if you have any questions always feel free to give us a call our toll-free line is 888-684-0086 i'm jim at extension 113 i'd be happy to help you and again thank you for taking the time to view this dvd